do recipe number two. We're going to focus on whole grains, and we're adding some wonderful, wonderful vegetables. So we're getting some extra antioxidants that, again, can protect your brain cells from free radical damage. So today we're using, uh, this is actually one of my favorite greens to use, uh, which is called fado uh, in Italian, uh, or spelt um, in English. Um, it is a really, really nice green, very hearty, fantastic to use in uh, recipes. I'll pass, this is what it looks like. So you can see, you can pass that around. Um, there are a couple different versions of spelt and different varieties of spelt, depending on how uh, far it's been processed. Uh, so you find things like wheat berries as well, hard wheat berries, um, which are, again, really nice, delicious. From a culinary point of view, uh, wheat berries take a lot longer to cook. Um, they're a little chewier. Uh, they're a little more al dente, um, whereas the, the spelt fado will break down a little more, almost like barley. It'll break down a little bit more. So just to keep an eye out when you are looking for it. Um, this one, I got at Loblaws, actually. I swear, I thought, uh, <laughs> some ingredients are, yeah, you have to go far and beyond to, yes. So if you uh, wanted to do wheat berries or there's another whole grain that you like, mm -hmm. as long as it's a whole grain from a nutrition standpoint, you're doing yourself some good um, and you're going to have that slow, sustained energy. So what we're going to do here is we're making a soup, we're creating a soup with it. Uh, this is going to be a caramelized onion and uh, delicata squash soup. Uh, we also have some Brussels sprouts as well um, because Brussels sprouts are tasty uh, and we figured we'd add them here. They've actually done studies looking at people who eat leafy greens every day um, and compared them to people that don't and they saw that over time people who included leafy greens every day in their diet uh, were less likely to develop memory problems and especially Alzheimer's disease and dementia. So again, just another reason, we're always talking about leafy greens from a cancer prevention standpoint, but the impact that some of the, the plant nutrients have on, on memory and learning is quite beneficial. This is probably the most time consuming part, is letting these onions slowly cook down. This is uh, pretty much what you're looking for, just very thin slices, and you wanna add them to a pot. So you can see how it's cooked down. That's about, that was about three onions worth. Um, the pot was pretty much full, so it cooks down to almost nothing, but the flavor in these are incredible. So again, slow and low heat. Uh, the thyme, uh, you wrap it up in a little bit of butcher's twine, that way it stays all together and you can remove it at the end. And so to that, we're going to add a little bit of delicata squash. Now this is, this is a delicata squash. If uh, you guys haven't seen it before, um, you're starting to see more and more of them in the grocery stores and more squash in general you're starting to see in grocery stores, which is fantastic. Um, this one here tastes, uh, it's one of the sweeter ones. It tastes almost like a sweet potato. That's why they call it, the, another name for it is a sweet potato squash. Very easy to prepare. Like any squash, you just want to cut it in half, remove the seeds. Um, you can peel it or leave the skin on. It has a very, very thin skin. That's why these squash don't last as long as some of your other squash. It's a little more delicate. Delicata. Delicata. Um, so you can leave the skin on and it tastes really nice as well. It's a little bit crispy, but absolutely fine on its own. And again, what we want to do is just peel them, slice them thin, and that is going to go in at this stage. So once we have the onions caramelized, the squash is going to go in. The Brussels sprouts, the same thing. We have our Brussels sprouts. Just kind of clean them, cut them in half, and we're just going to shave them. Shave them, you can either use a grater or your knife, and you're just pretty much slicing them. I would be afraid to grate them. You'd end up getting more finger yeah. than Brussels sprouts yeah. or something. And so that, the shaved Brussels sprouts are also going to go in. And this is a really nice way to kind of incorporate Brussels sprouts for, you know, those who don't like Brussels sprouts. Um, it's going to caramelize with the onions, with the squash, and you're going to have almost like a French onion soup. Uh, but you know, the one thing I, I don't like about French onion soup is it's, there's very little in it. It's pretty much just broth and a, and a few onions. This is, is going to be uh, very hearty, uh, but you're going to have some of those similar caramelization flavors in it, which is really nice. So that's it. Brussels sprouts go in, delicata squash in, give it a quick stir, 
And then the last step I'm going to do before I add the stock is just a splash of vinegar. Again, this is going to waken up all of those flavors, that squash, the Brussels sprouts. Uh, this is sherry vinegar. You can add you know, a little bit of red wine vinegar, lemon juice even if you want. You don't need much. Just about a tablespoon in there. Beautiful. And then with our vegetable stock. We have a great recipe on elixirkitchen.ca for soup stock. Um, it's quite easy. It's a great way to use all of your vegetable scraps, and it's a great way to get some extra potassium, which helps to lower your blood pressure. And that's it. So the fado goes in, and you want to bring this up to a boil. Now, if the fado is going in raw, if you haven't cooked it yet, uh, it'll probably take simmering. It'll probably take about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. If you have the fado already cooked ahead of time, then pretty much as soon as you bring it up to a boil, um, it's ready to serve. And the whole grains are great from the fiber point of view that I talked about. There are also good sources of folate, zinc, and magnesium, which all play different roles in brain health. So the folate, studies have shown that people that don't get enough folate over their adult lives are, again, at higher risk of dementia. It plays an important role in brain development in babies as well. Um, and the zinc is actually needed to regulate mood, which can also affect memory and learning as well. So one of the symptoms of having a zinc deficiency in adults is depression. And in children, um, having behavioral problems can sometimes be a sign of having a zinc deficiency. So important for the mood perspective. The magnesium is an interesting one because it plays a role in stress regulation. So magnesium actually signals the, the hormone that releases the stress hormones, cortisol, um, within your body, magnesium actually down-regulates that so that you don't produce as much of those. And even more interesting, magnesium can block the movement of those stress hormones from your blood into your brain. So if you're feeling stressed, choosing some magnesium-rich foods is a great way to help to alleviate some of that, that frenzy which can also affect your learning and your concentration, of course. And that's it. So, you know, really nice hearty soup, comfort food for sure. Uh, and then you can even put, you know, a little piece of uh, toast on top with a little gruyere. I chose the stinkier <laughs> one today. Did anyone notice when they came noticed. in? Yeah. So uh, choose whatever cheese you like for that. Uh, but that's it. You know, very, very simple soup uh, using uh, the fado green.